G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Star Citizen with Mags. So, time to step away from the window and admiring the gas giant crusader and go and take a look at a ship that I actually promised you guys that I was going to take a look at about three weeks ago and never quite got around to it. I'm actually only just getting this video made in time because uh, patch 2.61 is about to become patch 2.62 which thankfully apparently they've actually fixed all the computers in Let's see if this one works um yep okay beautiful we have a working computer now we're after the ship for today there it is the drake herald so we're just going to go over the ship stats quickly here first. The Drake Herald is a rather interesting and unique ship. Its role is an info runner and is the only ship of that type currently available in the game. Or even mentioned to be in the game for that matter. She's 23 meters long, weighs 18 tons, has a crew of two and carries no physical cargo whatsoever. However, she does have two rather large S3 power plants for a size, carries a size 3 shield system, two size 3 engines at the back, which for the size of this spacecraft is actually kind of huge, eight size 1 maneuvering thrusters, and it is jump capable, which is going to be a requirement. Weapons, on the nose we have a single size 2 CF-117 Badger Repeater, it is gimbaled, two wing mounted size 1 CF-007 Bulldog Repeaters, and it carries two groups of four Task Force 1 size 1 EM missiles. So that's the basics of the ship, it is incredibly fast, it doesn't have much in the way of utility and its weapons are all size 1 and size 2, primarily designed for forcing away the few ships in the game that are fast enough to be able to catch it. Anyways, let's go and have a look at the real thing. Selection confirmed. Your ship is currently being delivered to the launch platform. And there she is, the Herald. Now, I have to say straight away, I absolutely love the design of this ship. It is effectively two massive, almost light capital ship-sized engines bolted to the back of a small living space with a reactor sitting somewhere in the middle to make them run. That is really the core of the, uh, the main chassis of this ship. And honestly, that's how this ship looks like it was assembled. It almost looks like it was the engine nacelle for a much larger ship that somebody just happened to put a living compartment in and a cockpit in the front of. And it tends to get a lot of attention. Every time I pull this thing out, I always wind up with somebody trying to check it out and see exactly what its go is. Apparently, they're not very common to see. So, taking a brief look around the outside of the hull, uh, keep in mind this is basically a flying mainframe. Apparently SATA is still a thing in the future. We also have data system access on the external of the ship. I don't think this is actually meant to be direct mainframe access. What the? Somebody's just buzzing around me here while I'm trying to record this. Anyways, um, I don't think it's supposed to be direct mainframe access. I think those side pockets are supposed to be so you could drop the Herald into a location and a soldier on the outside would be able to plug an external hard drive in to transfer data out. Anyways, let's take a look inside. So, welcome aboard the Drake Herald. To the right hand side of the computer terminal in the center of the ship is the switch to open and close the main external door. The pilot seat is up the front of the ship in the pointy end, exactly where you would expect. It's a pretty basic no frills cockpit, but it's a Drake ship, so that's what you get. A little bit of storage to the left here, we've got a weapons locker to the right. The main computer terminal in the center of the room, which I will come to. now. What the hell are those idiots doing outside? Alright, as long as they don't ram my ship. Anyways, um... I've lost my train of thought now. Uh, yes, we've got some pretty serious computing power inside of the ship, as you would expect. We've got mainframes the entire way down the ship. The ship features an armoured computer core. The idea here is... Actually, that's probably the place I should go first. What is this ship for? What is data running? Well. Picture the Star Wars universe. The Rebels have captured the plans to the Death Star and they're trying to move them from point A to point B. 
if that was happening in the Star Citizen universe, the Drake Herald would be the ship moving the Death Star plans. This ship is designed to move extremely sensitive, high volume information, the kind of stuff that would be taken from explorers finding new worlds or scientific crews developing entirely new technologies extremely complex battle plans and of course the plans for new UAE capital ships or super weapons the kind of stuff that you can't risk transmitting for the chance that the transmission itself may be intercepted by somebody along the way so what you do instead is you load them into the Drake Herald the Drake Herald has an armored computer core it's supposed to be virtually impossible to hack it is designed so that in the case that the ship itself may be compromised or captured, it's very easy for the crew to scrub the hard drive and make all the data unrecoverable so it cannot be compromised. It features an advanced sensor and communication suite, which we will take a look at in a moment. It's non-functional outside of the ability to fold it out of the ship, but it is currently modeled in there, but we'll have a look at that in a moment. And of course, it has a pretty wicked computer system here. Hang on, let me turn it on. There we go. So anyways, that is the basic role of the Drake Herald. It's a two-man ship. The idea is one pilot piloting, one pilot or yeah, information handler, computer technician, sensor operator, whatever the role happens to be called in the Star Citizen universe, mans this position here. And the ship goes to a location where there is somebody who wants to move a large amount of extremely valuable, extremely expensive data. That is then loaded into the ship's hard drives and locked inside of the armoured computer core. The ship will then transit from point A to point B, regardless of where point B happens to be, maybe one, maybe several jumps away, and it will do so faster than any other ship that is available in Star Citizen. The Herald is the fastest ship in Star Citizen currently. It does uh, 850. The second fastest ship in Star Citizen as it currently stands is the 350R, which only does 840 under full afterburn. So basically the only ships that are going to be able to keep up with this thing once it goes full burn is some very lightly armoured, lightly armed, dedicated racing ships, which is why the size 2 uh, main gun and two size 1 guns, as well as the missiles that it's currently equipped with, all size 1s, are more than sufficient for this ship. It's not designed to handle major combat. It just runs away from anything that has guns that can deal with it in a real hurry. Anything that's fast enough to keep up with it it can flip itself over in decoupled, moving at 850, where the ships can't quite catch it and shoot it continuously in the face until it decides that following this thing is probably not a great idea. On the chance that something should catch it, disable it, or compromise it in some way where the data could be potentially lost, the ship has the ability for one of these crew members to jump onto this computer, hit a button, and erase the computer cores so that the ship itself can be taken, the crew can be taken, but the information will be lost to the attackers. So anyways, let's fire this thing up and see what it can do. First things first, we'll just do a slow Hello float off the your landing pad. Craft. Your systems are online. Thank you, computer. Launch complete. All right, we'll flick out to the external view so you can see exactly how the landing gear retract. The animation is quite nice. It's very basic though. It just folds straight in against the hull. The ship itself is then well, as you can see, it's a giant engine to sell with the cockpit sticking out the front of it. It's great. Hmm. You can see the thrusters are extremely powerful and responsive. I actually prefer to try and tune down the thrust... Ooh, give a bit of lag there. The thruster operation when I'm flying this ship, it can drift really, really quickly. As in, as much as it's only got size 1 thrusters, the ship is so light at 18 tonnes that the eight size one thrusters can really make it move sideways in a hurry. A quick change of direction into reverse. I'm just trying to watch what this guy that's coming up here is actually doing at the moment. Ah, uh, yeah, if he's not trying to ram this thing, yeah, that happens. All right, so maximum throttle on this thing flying under normal conditions is 185. Um, it's by no means particularly fast. Most military ships can get over 200 without an issue. However, once you start punching the afterburner, as you can see, straight out to 850, and fingers off the afterburner, this ship can sustain this almost indefinitely. At this point, the engines are off. We are just flying under inertia at this point, and... Yeah, we're 10 
meters per second faster than any other ship in the game. Now the ship is of course equipped with the standard countermeasure suite, so any missiles or long range weapons that are guided coming in on it can be spoofed on your way out of the area. Uh, the only thing you got to worry about is long range shots as you're outrunning the military vessels, but you're that much faster than most of them that this shouldn't be too much of an issue. And light fire from, well as I said before, light fire from small racing craft that might be able to follow you, or even another Drake Herald that they may have available to try and chase you down, isn't going to be too much of a threat to your shields. The shields are reasonably robust on this vessel, and it will be simple enough providing you have the lead to just decouple the ship, reverse the ship 180, and continue to shoot your enemy in the face while still exiting the area at exactly the same time. And this got me to thinking, how exactly do you catch a Drake Herald? Unless you happen to have one available, and even then it can only go as fast as the Herald that is running away, which is already moving at its maximum speed, so you simply won't close relative distance to one another while flying two of identical ships chasing one another. Now, the logical assumption here would be that the ship that's designed to hunt the Herald isn't currently in the game, or hasn't currently been announced, but I'm actually not convinced of that. I was thinking about the design of the Herald itself, there was something about it that bugged me. It doesn't strike me as an overly pirate vessel, coming from Drake, a developer that pretty much manufactures pirate vessels. So where's the pirate in the Herald? And there's a couple of other issues with the design too. For instance, it's a data runner, so its job isn't to analyse, its job is to simply transport. So why does it have a computer terminal? It doesn't need one. It just needs the data to be loaded on at the point of departure and removed at the point of arrival. It doesn't need to actually access any of the computer systems while it's in flight. The second thing, if we go down the back of the ship right now, and hit this switch hidden over here, which quickly jump back up into the cockpit so we can uh, have a bit of a look on the outside of the ship. Uh, let's get back into the seat. Hello and welcome aboard your Drake Interplanetary Craft. Yes, computer. Shh. There we go. All right, so looking at the outside, that is the sensor and communications array on the Drake Herald. Why does it have that? It doesn't need to transmit data. And sensors are useful, but it shouldn't need anything too advanced. Its job is just, it's, it's a race car with a computer inside of it. What does it have that for? And that got me to thinking. We know that there will be a hacking profession coming up in Star Citizen. We know that, we know that hackers will be able to break through the security features on ships in port, uh, overriding them, allowing them to be boarded even when they're locked. A hacker will be able to crack the avionics codes, allowing for non-registered users, so non-owners of a vessel, to be able to power up and start a vessel. We know that hacking will be able to access information. In fact, the data running profession is the profession about keeping information safe and moving it. The hacking profession is the profession for getting access to the data. Now since at this point there is actually no information on how hacking is actually going to work outside of the fact that it will be a thing and a few basic examples of what it will, you will be able to do with it, it's been assumed that the hacker will have to operate on site. So the, the hacker will have to physically plug a cable into the computer of the ship in order to access the systems and be able to crash them open to allow a boarding crew on board or to get access to the avionics. But what if that's not the case? This ship has a massive communications and sensor array attached to it and a massive computer in the center of it and it happens to be very, very, very fast. It's also an ideal ship when you think about it for a hacker looking to remotely access a ship's systems in order to turn off its internal components, open up its security doors, shut down its defenses while working with a boarding fleet to hit the ship while it's in space. I have a sneaking suspicion that the Drake Herald is not just a data runner, but is also the pirate hacker's vessel of choice when it comes to deep space operations and support roles. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. This little bit of theory crafting at the end is just that. It has not been confirmed by SIG at all, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Still, I hope you enjoyed the look of the Herald. It is a really cool little ship. Until next time, click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you around the verse.